Hello everybody, welcome to the shop. On the table today we've got a turbo. This is an HE351CW whole set and of course it's going to go on the downhill Dodge. If you guys have been following my previous Dodge videos you'll know that I swapped the original baby H1C turbo with a whole set HX35 turbo off of a second gen Dodge Cummins. That turbo worked great until it started leaking oil from the center housing into the intake, into the compressor housing, and I didn't want to have a runaway. So I replaced that turbo with a, I found a nice, it was a military surplus HX35 off of eBay, brand new. It had a, it was cool, it had a billet compressor wheel and it had a 14 centimeter exhaust housing and the stock HX35 turbos have a 12 centimeter housing. And I did a little bit of research and I determined from my research that the larger exhaust housing results in a slightly laggy boost but it lowers your EGTs because it is more free flowing. And I found that it is just the opposite. It's an awful turbo for that truck or at least for, for my particular motor because there isn't enough boost and the motor is fueling for more boost because it was used to the previous turbo there's too much fuel for the amount of boost, it smokes, the EGTs are hot there is no boost at all, I mean there is some but it just the boost never gets up to where I want it to be around 30 psi or so, it was just an awful turbo bad decision so I'm finally putting on the turbo that I've wanted to put on right from the get go anyway. I should have put this turbo on two years ago when I was doing all that work on my Dodge. But anyway, I'm doing it now. This is a remanufactured turbo that I got off of eBay. There's a bunch of sellers selling these turbos on there. And seems good. It, it's, it's kind of hosed with some ugly uh, silver paint. I thought it was just bead blasted, but it's silver paint. The bearings seem nice and tight. That's all been rebuilt. I'm a little disappointed that this, this particular seller bead blasted everything to clean it, but there was leftover glass bead everywhere all over it. You touch it and you're all sandy feeling. And uh, I don't think glass bead is a good thing to have around a turbo, so I was a little disappointed with that, but I blew it all off with the compressed air. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to be doing to this turbo is setting up the wastegate situation. I took off the stock wastegate actuator which went right here and went down to the little toggle there. I'm going to make a spring gate. I'm going to get onto that later. But first of all, this is where the solenoid valve goes that delivers compressed air to the wastegate. And if you keep the solenoid here, you can either keep it energized or de-energized and it'll allow you to either have 20 psi or 40 psi of boost. I it's kind of cool, but I don't really want 20 or 40 psi. I want 30, so I'm going to plug this hole, but there's a couple holes inside that we need to plug. There's this little vent hole here. I don't know really what it does, but if you shine a flashlight through it, the light comes out in there. But that hole has to be plugged, and as it is right now, it's a perfect size for a 1024 tap. So I've got a tap all set and ready to go. You see I put some grease on it, partly for lubrication, but also to catch chips. I can blow the chips out or suck the chips out of here, but I think it's even better just to catch them before they even fall off into that hole. And you'll notice that I stuffed a rag down there because this hole connects into the main passage here. And also there was a little uh, hose barb here that would have gone to the wastegate actuator. I tried to pull it out, but I broke it, so I'm just going to drill that out and that should be a good size for a quarter twenty set screw. And I'm just going to tap the hole partially so you still kind of have the lead in of the tap there with the incomplete threads so when I run a set screw in there it'll kind of seal up and jam against those threads, kind of like pipe thread. Okay so I got the first hole drilled and tapped and I put a set screw in there with a little bit of blue Loctite. Uh, as it turned out I did a 5 16 18 hole for here because the hole was just a little too big for putting a quarter inch tap in. Now over here I did tap it with grease like I said but as it turned out I had a machine tap not a hand tap 
and those taps send the chips down the hole rather than just staying in the flutes of the tap. So it sent all the chips down that hole. So I have to take this silencer ring off so I can get to the other hole and blow it out. So the trick is to get a, a little punch like this. See, I, I already pried it up here, but get the punch or the awl, this is an awl, get it right in there like that in the corner and give it a whack or two with a hammer and that'll peel that, that ring out. He's just using a screwdriver or something, the screwdriver is just going to slip right out. But this all worked really well. Now I can get a screwdriver in there and then just work the ring up like that, like normal. So there's the other set screw. Uh, it's a 1024. I just threaded it in there with some red Loctite and I put it in there as you can see below the surface because I don't want it interfering with the plug that I'm going to put in here. And here's the plug. This is an M22 by one and a half oil drain plug. I bought it off eBay for about seven dollars, eight dollars or so. I did have to cut it shorter as you see. It was about a little over a quarter inch too long. I'm just going to screw that in there and then that part is all set. After I do that I'm going to clean this up a little bit, tape off these holes and paint it with the red paint that my old turbo was painted with. Now the next step is to clock the exhaust housing to the center section. Now I happen to have one of my old turbos here. This is an HX35, the one that was leaking oil into the intake. And I'm going to use this as a as a pattern for the orientation of the oil inlet to the exhaust flange. So in order to rotate the exhaust housing on the HE351, there is a V-band that you'll have to take off that goes right around this diameter here. And there's also, you can see the hole here where it was, there is a little dowel pin. So you'll need to take the V-band off, pull off the housing, and pull out that dowel pin. Then you can rotate the housing whichever way you like. And while the housing is off, this is a perfect time to drill out the holes. The HE351 exhaust housing has two straight through holes and two stud holes. But on our first gen Dodge trucks, you have four studs coming out of the manifold, the exhaust manifold. So you want four plain holes in this flange. So I'm going to drill this out and the other one out. And this is a great time to do it because any chips will just fall and if you get any chips in here you can easily just clean them out. Also what I'm going to do when I put this back together, you see I already put it on here, is put some anti-seize on this flat spot here and also the in inside diameter there where the housing sits on the center section. That way if I need to take this apart at any time in the future, hopefully this should make it a lot easier to do because that's part of the reason why I'm not taking apart this turbo to rebuild it because I can't get this exhaust housing off. It's pretty good and stuck on there but it's okay because it's making me upgrade to a better turbo anyway. Now the last thing to do with the turbo off of the truck and sitting on your bench is to clock the compressor housing. Now I don't know exactly where I want the housing clocked but I have a rough idea and also as you can see this housing is held on with a humongous snap ring or Jesus clip uh, which is the proper term. I don't have a snap ring plier that's big enough for this ring and the older the HX35's the snap ring had a little leg that came up so you could just squeeze it with pliers but that's not the case here. So what I did I, I made some pliers give you an idea of what I did here. So now we're all set and ready to go. I, I clocked the housing and I also moved this snap ring so it was up top. See this is the upper oil inlet so it's right up top as the turbo is sitting on the engine. So I can easily access this snap ring later once the turbo is on the truck for final adjustment. Now the last piece of the puzzle is right here. This is a mating exhaust flange. 
Hole set, of course, had to be different. And this flange isn't exactly four inches, isn't exactly three and three quarter. It's some stupid goofy oddball size. So you have to have a special clamp and flange to fit it. This flange is custom made by The Hungry Diesel. That's the website, thehungrydiesel.com. And it's just machined out of a big hunk of steel. It fits three inch or four inch down pipes. So, and it's mild steel and you can just weld it onto your down pipe. So aside from probably a couple pieces of intercooler tubing that I'm gonna have to buy after I get this set up and visualize how everything's gonna go, that's pretty much all the preparation work that needs to be done to this turbo before it can be put onto the, onto the truck. That's with the exception of a wastegate situation. I'm going to make a spring gate. I'm going to, again, like I said, I'll talk about that later once I get this mounted on the truck. That's the last thing that needs to be done for this to function properly. So that sums it up for part one. Make sure to keep an eye out for part two when I put this on my truck. I want this swap to be as quick and easy as possible. So I have as much prepared as I possibly can. I'm going to make sure I have all my gaskets and everything ready to go. And I will start installing this on the truck. So once again, stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this section of the video and keep an eye out for part two. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. That way you'll get a notification of when the next video comes out. So thanks for watching everybody and stay tuned for more.